Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY. In this episode, I will be making a segmental vase. The shape is based loosely on a Greek amphora. I use the word loosely with a fair bit of leeway. I began by cutting the segments for the base section. 18 segments cut with an 80 degree angle for each ring. The wood I am using is paduke and maple to add some contrast. As with all the segments off camera, I sanded each one to clean the edges to remove all the rough bits and get a good fit. Learning my lesson from previous projects, I made sure I applied plenty of glue. I don't want this one coming apart on the lathe like on a previous bowl. Definitely not an experience I enjoyed. With the first ring glued up, I used a hose clamp to secure the segments. I have found this to be the best method to get nice tight joints. You just have to make sure the segments are good and level before applying full clamping pressure. This is the first maple ring and forms part of the central banding. But looking at the state of these segments, I didn't sand the edges. Note to self, must try harder next time. I'm not going to show all the rings being made, but off camera I glued a 5mm strip of maple to a piece of paduk to form some of the midsection feature. There will be two of these to make. And yes, just to prove a point, here I am sanding some of the segments. And yes, the saw is unplugged so no chance of any mishaps, though it wouldn't have hurt to lower the blade out of harm's way. There are a total of 11 rings and a solid base piece. They will be glued up in three separate sections, base, middle and top. I did this so I can get to the inside. If all the rings are glued together as one, it would be very difficult to form the inside face. So with all the segmental rings glued up, each one had to be sanded and I used the drum sander to do it. I changed the sandpaper to a 120 grit for these and I was not sure if it would be aggressive enough but remembering to just take light passes, it did okay. The next thing that needs improvement is dust extraction. I am using a Bosch Workshop dust extractor connected through a Cyclone dust collector but this sander creates lots of fine particles and the setup I have just isn't powerful enough to remove it all. I've invested in something that should be better. I'll let you know how I get on with it when I get it set up. The last bit through the sander is the solid base piece. Probably not necessary, but the machine was on, so why not? With this done, I mounted the solid maple to the lathe, this time using a dovetail ring which matches up with the jaws on the chuck. Normally I would have put this through the bandsaw to get it closer to round, but this time I didn't bother. It's only a small piece and it didn't take long to turn it down to size. This time I decided to use a tenon to hold the piece in the chuck. I haven't used one before and I was interested to see how it would do compared to a mortise. So with the base turned roughly to shape and a dovetail added to the tenon, I moved on to gluing the top section. For this I just glued three rings together.
Next up the middle section. For this I glued four rings, including the two maple rings. To try to prevent the rings sliding around whilst I clamp them, you can see me using hot melt glue to hold them. The hot melt glue stays flexible to allow good clamping pressure to be applied, but keeps the rings in alignment. I did not feel myself clamping them, but it worked a treat. Finally the base section, five rings and the solid base piece, again each one glued with tight bond 2 and held in place with hot melt glue. I thought I might have trouble with the hot melt glue getting between the rings, but I think the wet wood glue solidified it before I had a chance to cause any problems. I left the three sections to dry overnight and the next day started with the top section. The maple ring will form the rim. I only needed to get the outside roughly to shape. I mainly wanted to hollow out the inside whilst it was easy to get to. A little bit of sanding and the top was done, for now at least. Then it was the turn of the base section. I began shaping the outside to more or less the finished form. The base section is mounted in the chuck by the tenon, and I have to say this is much better than a mortise. I did check the chuck from time to time to make sure it was still tight, but I didn't have any problems throughout the whole turning process. With a freshly sharpened bowl gouge, turning the outside surface was easy. In the next few clips, I'm using a gouge to shear scrape. This is a fairly new technique to me, and I found it to be a very controllable method for removing material. There was still a bit of work to do on the outside. I used a negative rate scraper to take out the tool marks, and then began hollowing out the inside. I was not trying to get a perfect shape on the inside, I only wanted it to be smooth, with no rough edges. I also wanted to leave some of the weight around the base, so when finished it would be better balanced and not top heavy. Once again the Easywood Tools carbide finisher was the tool of choice for hollowing out the inside. It allows me to cut down the face and across the base, taking out small amounts of material. Honestly, I prefer traditional wood turning tools, but this carbide cutter cannot be beaten at this particular job. Partly because space is tight on this lathe. Perhaps if I had a bigger lathe, maybe one day, but that will have to wait. 
after sanding the inside it was time to join the base and the midsection. 10 points if you can spot the error that I had to rectify about an hour after this clip was shot. It's a few days later and with the error fixed I began turning the midsection, initially using the half inch bowl gouge to remove the bulk of the material. I used a skew chisel to fine tune the surface and blend the two sections together. With that done, I moved on to finishing the base. I purposely left this till later because I wanted as much strength in this section until the bulk of the material had been removed. I began shaping the base with a quarter inch parting tool and I used a set of calipers to gauge the correct diameter to achieve the required depth of cut. Once I had reached the correct depth, I used a quarter inch bowl gouge to remove the remaining material and the skew chisel to fine tune the surface. There wasn't a lot of space to work, so I had to go carefully so I didn't get a catch on the other side of the cut. Final go with the skew chisel to blend the surface and I moved on to hollowing out the inside. I'm not going to show much of this, mainly because there isn't anything to see. I just needed to get the inside smooth and blend the two sections together. With the inside done, off camera, I offered up the top section and marked its diameter on the top of the mid section. You can just make out the pencil mark. I then used the negative rate scraper to get down to the line and then once again use a skew chisel to blend and fair the surface. I did some sanding both inside and out from 80 to 180 grit. I then used sanding sealer on the inside and finished it off with wood wax 22 just to seal the wood. In the next clip you can see a bit of a dodgy move. I have my hand inside the workpiece polishing the wax off the surface, but also note I have my left hand on the speed control, so if anything happened I would be able to quickly stop the lathe. So with the inside finished I glued the top section on mounted in the coal jaws. This then made it easy to bring the tailstock up to add clamping pressure and keep everything centred. The next day, and with everything firmly glued up, I began blending the sections together. I used a half inch bowl gouge to shear scrape the excess material away. I then followed up with a Simon Hope negative rake scraper, being very careful not to catch the spinning coal jaws. And for the tighter sections, I nibbled away with a carbide cutter. At this point I'd done as much as I could with the coal jaws in place, so I removed them and to add support I used the tailstock with a piece of plywood to bridge the hole in the top.
With more room to move, I was able to begin taking the neck down to the required diameter, again using a set of calipers as a guide. After a final measure, I just needed a bit more out, so I used the carbide cutter to very gently remove some more material. But, you guessed it, not gently enough. Okay, so I got a bit complacent, but with no significant damage, I finished the rim with a parting tool, just to get things square. And with that done, it was time for sanding. I'll save you from the delights of the full sanding process. I started with 80, through 120, 180, 240, 320 and finally to 400 grit. After sanding I liberally applied sanding sealer, two coats. This raises the wood grain, so I denib the surface with fine wire wool. Then two coats of Yorkshire grit, applied with a folded paper towel and then polished off until the paper towel is not picking up any more off the surface. Wax 22 is my wax of choice, and it happens to be all I have, so multiple coats of that, polished off until a deep luster is achieved. Up next, to finish off, is Hampshire Sheen Microcrystalline Wax, two coats polished off to seal the surface. finish I've turned it round so I can remove the tenon. Most is already gone, with just a bit in the middle to go. I sanded as much as I could and as if by magic the rest disappears, only leaving me to level a base so it sits without wobbling. A bit of sealer and polish and it's done. That's it, all finished. I hope you enjoyed this one, I enjoyed making it. It will really help the channel if you subscribe, a thumbs up will be great and comments are always welcome. See you in the next one. Bye for now.